conversation is with the Reverend Dr. Charles Coleman. Uh, Dr. Coleman, thank you for being with us. Appreciate that. You are uh, a member of the council for how many years now? Uh, this is my eighth year. Eighth year. This is my eighth year. All right. So you've been, you've been uh, through two election cycles and you've seen uh, some growth. And, and of course, now you, are you a native of Jonesboro? No, I'm originally from Fort Smith. Okay. Fort uh, Smith. Moved to uh, Fort City to teach and then moved to Arkansas State University to teach engineering, and I did that for 20 years, so I decided to stay here. Decided to, to make it a home. Right. So you, clearly you liked Jonesboro uh, Compared 30 Compared to a lot ago. of places I've been, yeah. 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 So tell me how it's changed in your years. Uh, a lot has really changed. Uh, the whole, I say the global area, I use that term global extensively <laughs> because uh, Jonesboro itself is a global entity without, you know, by itself. And I think the change is that more people are getting involved in realizing that this is their city. Yeah. And when I first moved here, it wasn't that way. It was like a, you maybe had possibly four or five people that actually, what I use the term, ran the city. I see. But it's now you have more people taking a part of what needs to happen and the growth of Jonesboro. That excites me. Yeah. That is exciting. Yeah. Uh, it's you, when you have people that really want to see it right. su succeed, and right. you know, uh, at some level, we all have to pull together. And, right. and but, but and you, and you, you really know. have more people standing up in a positive, in my opinion, a positive direction than than you really think. You know, uh, being on the council, you don't see it much in the council when you come to the council meeting. But since I do a lot in the community, uh, I see that. And that makes me feel good. It, matter of fact, it kind of helps me when I get up in the morning, time to go to work. <laughs> yeah. Right, and that's good. That's yeah. good. Now, tell me, uh, you talk about your 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 life. You know, you you're here every other Tuesday, right. and you're always a councilman. And I'm, you're always taking calls right. from from the public, and right. and what it's what what is the life of a councilman like, and and how much of your day does it take? Um, believe it or not. The life of a council, from my perspective, I want to make sure that's totally clear, being on the north side, I get probably a little bit more calls, and I've even had other council members make the statement to me that you probably get a little bit more calls than a lot of people. Uh, north side is kind of like uh, being a stepchild mm -hmm. from the city perspective, and so people really want a lot of things changed, and so I get more calls, more visitation than most, and, and normally people don't come to your house, but uh, I'm an open book. Yeah. And at the same time, you know, I'm a minister. Uh, I use the word, people use the term preacher a lot, but I use the word minister and a servant more than anything. And so I don't have any problem with it. Only thing that I do do very bluntly is make statements to people, what do you want and what are you gonna do about it? And so uh, that is kind of shortened some of the people coming. <laughs> because, you know, most people want you to go out and do the fighting for them and they stand behind. But uh, my statement is always, well, if you want this done, I need to see you in the council chambers looking at you when, if I'm going to make a proposal. Right. So uh, from that standpoint of uh, the councilman, I'm, I'm busy almost 24-7. Believe it or not, uh, some, I get calls real late. Do you? Real late. Yeah. So is it, uh, what are the needs? What, what type of needs do you most frequently of the, Most of the needs is really, uh, this might sound strange the way I, I, I give this answer, is more because of they don't have the information. Uh, it's like coming to the city plan for a permit, coming to the city plan for certain things. They have a kind of a mixed screw mentality of not knowing where to go to get the right stuff. In other words, they think if you come to city council, city council takes all care of their, their health needs, mm -hmm. their other needs, uh, uh, say clothing, uh, getting the gas turned on, water turned on, this type of thing, and they find out that that's not really that information. And I'm kind of surprised at some of the answers or mm -hmm. some of the questions about people that have been here all their life and they don't know where to go. Right. And I think the city itself as a whole has helped that, uh, believe it or not, uh, it, it sounds a little strange the way I'm gonna say it, but even with this new building, people see now, this is not where they go to get, pay their gas bill. 
Right. This is not where they go to ask about the water. This is, the, but at the same time, they're finding out they're they're still asking questions. Who do I see? Right. And uh, my favorite, my wife's favorite statement to me: Make sure you let them know your name's not God. You don't you don't know all <laughs> have all the answers. You know. That's funny. So, yeah. Well, so yeah. she's she's right in that. But the but uh, when people are in need, it's nice to have. Uh, have you there to, right. to, and you've been there for, for people for a long time. Uh, is what is that what drew you to, I mean, you're, you're a reverend, so you're clearly drawn well, to Well, I, I try not to uh, mix those. And let me explain uh, by mixing. Uh, I use the word servant more than I do the word reverend. Uh, okay. My job is to serve the people. I was uh, allowed to be able to come off the streets 48 years ago. And so I see people for who they are, not who I want them to be. So I'm able to talk with them and not to them. Uh, as uh, I tell people, I'm usually able to talk their language. Mm -hmm. uh, it's kind of like uh, writing a dissertation. You know, a doctor might write a dissertation and he had these big words in it. And by the time that person reads, they still don't know what they read. But when I meet these people, when they make certain statements and use certain language, regardless of who they are, I'm able to understand it because, like I say, I lived in the street 90% of my life. Hmm. And when the Lord allowed me to be saved 48 years ago, uh, I wondered, too, what I was supposed to do. Hmm. And to the point of being a servant, so I don't look even so much as a counselman uh, in a different perspective. My job is to serve the people. And when I say serve, I don't mean just uh, say, well, okay, it's going to be okay. Right. You know, I hear that a lot from councilmen and, and other administrators. No, it's not going to be okay. There's some things that you need to do too, and there's some information that you need. And so, the lack of information is probably one of the biggest things that have helped me be able to communicate with people. This is where you go. This is what you do. This is a possibility because I have been there, done that. Yes. And I'm not saying that the other councilmen have not been able to do that, but because I lived in the streets, because I was raised with our parents. Uh, I can, uh, once again, redundantly, I can speak that language and I can say, hey, this is not what you do. We don't have to use correct English to say, go down there and go to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, That's it's, right. It's just that simple. Yeah. Well, you know, um, having, having been in Jonesboro two years, I've seen uh, uh, one of our issues be flooding. Right. And, and you're speaking to uh, things that people don't know. And, right. and one is the importance of insurance. Right. And, uh, and, and how to manage and prepare be, be to ensure that your, your home doesn't flood. Well, you, you look, you're looking at a, a, and this is across the board in Jonesboro, not just the Jonesboro True. north side issue. Um, people, back again with that favorite statement, information. You know, their parents before their parents didn't get insurance. Right. You know, they just try to live from day to day. Right. Not realizing well, it's exp it can you know it, it's expensive if, if you're if if you're living day to day so to speak or right. you know you, you don't have to be poor to be struggling these absolutely. days absolutely absolutely and, and uh, I think I think if you can find a way to save money you don't you feel you feel like you're throwing it down a well but right. but you don't want to risk losing everything in a storm either but when you when you when you live a lifestyle from day to day that's a hard concept to it except mm -hmm. when you know that you not really know when your next meal is coming from, when you don't know uh, from a job perspective because Jonesboro still is lacking what I call major employment. We have employment here, but where I've been, lived in different places, uh, they have major employment and you don't have that here. And then the second part of that story is, that, is the uh, uh, minimum wage uh, situation. You know, we don't pay. And then the third thing may sound strange, because we have a university here, that has helped the, the, the minimum wage stay at a stagnant hmm. place. A lot of people don't see that part because you have a university where kids are coming and they'll work, I'm not going to say for nothing, but they'll work for the minimum wage just to, just right. to get by. Right. Well, where does that leave the average citizen that's been here all their life? Right. And they go to a job and they say, well, I can hire a certain person because, you know, they need that job. And Well, when I've been there all my life, they'll say, well, they'd have to take the same amount of money. So the employment problem is an issue which relates to the whole picture, the big picture as far as I'm concerned. And that's not to put an issue down. I want to make sure that's a clear sure. statement because sure. I worked there 20 years and I enjoyed myself. But 
the real story is, economically, we should be able to do better. And right now, I don't think we're at that stage. It, it, you're speaking to some things when you talk about minimum wage. You're speaking to some things that are that are above and beyond the the scope of Jonesboro city government. Right. But uh, you are hitting on something that's that's critical. But it's part of city government in in this frame. And the reason why I say in this frame, they're expecting the city to do all this stuff. It's like a federal government right. situation, and they don't understand that's not part of our job. Now, part of our job is to, I believe, to work with the chamber to bring the economic status in this community up. But when it's, when it's not really uh, an in-bed situation, and I'm not saying that we're not totally in bed with the chamber, but when it's not an everyday analysis of what you're doing, then that leaves the complexity of the people of saying, well, we'll never get more than eight dollars an hour whatever an hour right. because they're not really in bed together like they should to bring the economic status up so and directly we are part of that responsibility you right. know so. so tell me about uh, what issues you think are, are critical in in Jonesboro at this moment. well you brought up one a few minutes ago about the flooding uh, the north side which I represent especially the what I call the north north side uh, second street fourth street 141 west of 141 it's a, just a big issue but the big issue is because once again uh, I'm not sure if, if that part of the city was annexed in that history I don't know but when it was annexed in or if it was annexed in the way that they have built the houses whoever built those houses built them I guess just to make money yeah and not recognizing that they were in a flood zone in a flood plain area Right. And when you have that depth of houses in that area, when, when the rain does come, it's, it's, you don't really have a choice not to flood. Right. You know, so those right. are some areas. The, 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 the widening of the streets, and, and you've, I guess the public itself have heard me gripe about Patrick Street, North Patrick Street, mm -hmm. that it need to be widened for uh, the children. And even if I stay on the council, uh, be reelected or not reelected, I'm going to fight. Uh, for the white of Patrick because uh, kids are walking in the middle of the road. Uh, they don't have to. Let's, let's be honest with you. But at the same time, it needs to be widened because now a lot of the traffic is coming off of a cover house. A lot of traffic is coming out of green. They're coming down those roads like Alice, right. like Patrick, and those uh, different uh, places, Scott Street in that particular area. And so now the increase of traffic is saying that we need to do something to help that flow. And I think something should have been a long time ago. Yes, it costs money. That's the other part of the, the, the community doesn't really understand. You know, I can want a, a brand new suit, <laughs> but I can go to over in Memphis and buy a uh, suit maybe one fifth of the price that I can buy it here mm -hmm. for the same amount because the same suit looks good but I can pay less. Right. And so that mentality is saying, well, why can't the city do these certain things? And I'm saying, financially, we can't do certain things until we either raise a tax, which I hate to talk about, okay? <laughs> right. uh, but if you want this city to grow and you want it to be like other cities, then you have to have the money to do it. We do have uh, the lowest, uh, among the lowest sales tax in, right. the, in the state. Right. And I, I think there's an education to be made of how cities get funded because people always say, well, that's my tax dollars. Right. Yeah, but what tax dollars? Is it right. sales tax dollars? Is it off your income? Right. You know, is it, uh, where is it coming from? And, yeah. and it's strictly sales tax. It's what you purchase in the city. And, and at the same time, you know, uh, uh, what, what also has an issue with that is that Jonesboro as a whole doesn't have what we call the supply and need demand that other cities has, meaning they want us to buy locally. Right. And I, I, I praise the Lord, I want to buy locally, but what if local don't have what I need? Right. Okay, and so they go someplace, and so the tax base becomes what? A little bit lighter, a little right. bit lighter. And so Jones Bear is going to have to grow enough in that, and I'm not sure how much the city can do about it, but uh, especially being on the council, but it's going to have to grow economically to appease 
at least some of these things that help people out a little bit. Well, that's that's an issue that was brought up last year, and I think uh, the, the city can't vote for uh, an internet sales tax, but right. we can vote to to uh, press our legislators right. for that. And I think you voted with th those who chose wanted to press that to, to have that income. You, you think see that as a fair. Well, we, we, we have an issue here that a lot of people are afraid to talk about it, and I'm not afraid to talk about it. Our legislators doesn't do us justice. Mm. Uh, it's, it's like when the election time comes, everybody comes out. Right. And everybody wants to pat you on the back and wants your vote. But between Little Rock and, and D.C., I don't care if they're Republican or Democrat, they're not helping us do what we really need to do as far as finances is concerned. Mm. You know? and, and so that... That, that, keep, that creates a problem to me that if we don't have the legislators pushing to get the finance that we need uh, to the employment, it's the same way we're paying city employees. You know, I'm not sure. As a councilman, I know what you guys make per day, but I'm, I'm saying, man, that's peanuts, mm -hmm. you know, to the fact of some of the things, the jobs that, that, that you do, and you're not getting paid for it. So that's the type... Thing. And of course, that's the type of thing that keeps me in trouble all the time, <laughs> because I run, my, I make, I will make the statements because I'm not afraid to make those statements. I'm not, I'm not so politically stupid that I'm waiting for you to give me a vote, you know. Uh, right. So I don't, I don't look at, I look at the fact of back to the first statement I made. I'm a servant, and my job is to serve you, the people here, that's working in this interview, to, to make you, uh, hopefully, for you get more money, but at the same time. If the legislators don't help us with that, right. you know, uh, it, we just have issues here yeah. uh, from that standpoint. Uh, the city as a whole is a good city. Uh, my wife and I wouldn't have decided to stay here uh, if it wasn't. Um, she's rich from Forest City. I'm rich, as I said before, I'm from Forest Smith. But I can see the potential. Uh, but, the, the, but, but the problem with the potential, some of the old heads need to go away, <laughs> you know. <laughs> And, right. and let some of the young folk come in and do some things. And those type of statements, I'm not afraid to make. I'm not afraid to say, well, it's, maybe it's time for me to go. Or maybe it's time for so-and-so, so-and-so to go. But as far as our legislators, man, we got the poorest legislators in the United States. And I, I hope they get to and hit this tape. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you know, it doesn't bother me at all. You think they need to do more for I for know they people. need to do more. Mm -hmm. They need to do more, especially those legislators that are from this city. Yes. You know, we shouldn't have, the city shouldn't have to have the burden we have with the flooding that we all have off 141 or all over the city if our legislators would help get more funds. They're waiting for us to do it, and then when we get angry and jump on them, then they got these big excuses for they can. They should be our forefront fighters, and they're not. Hmm. You know, they're the, they're the forefront fighters for what they want personally. Right. You know, just like the election is coming up in November, you know, I guarantee you my doorbell is going to ring, my phone is going to ring, and I'm really thinking about going and change my phone number, <laughs> you know, because I'm saying, what are you doing? You know, what are your things now? You, you're leading that burden, so it makes the city sometimes, uh, it, uh, I'll say the council, put it that right. way, and the mayor. It makes us look bad when we're not bad people because we don't have the support that we really need from our legislature, our councilmen, our state mm -hmm. We don't have that support. Oh, we have this photo op thing, but that ain't bringing in dimes. It's not bringing in the money. No. Well, no. Uh, yeah, that's, that's a, a sharp opinion that, that, uh, you know, that, that I guess has made you who you are through the years. And, well, you know, uh, I, I try my best to every day, and, and, and maybe this is not part of what needs to be on the interview, but you, you, you call me to be to interview. <laughs> every morning I get up praying and asking God, what do I do for him? Which means I have to serve you and all the people here in the city to the utmost, little, big, small, whatever it is I have to do, I have to be. And so if, 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 if being talked about badly behind me saying what's need to be said, then I'm still happy. Very because nice. I, my often statement is always, hey, with two people taking care of me, and that's Jesus and my wife, everybody else I don't lose no sleep over. <laughs> I don't. That's perfect. You know? that's perfect. And so uh, that, 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 that allows me to get up in the morning with a spring every morning because I know who and whom I'm fighting for, and that makes a difference to me.
So it's not about Charles Coleman. It's not about Reverend Dr. Charles Coleman or Dr. Mm -hmm. Coleman. It's about the people in this community. And since uh, I'm here and I love the people in this community, regardless of who they are, what it takes to, to have, hey, it's all about doing what I'm supposed to do. Well, you've uh, clearly been a, a good servant of Jonesboro for yeah. a long time, and, right. and uh, we thank you for your, for your service and for taking the time to visit with us. Well, I appreciate you asking, and, uh, you know, uh, it's, I'm just going to try to do more. I'm not satisfied uh, daily. It would be different if I could just be satisfied and go home and sit down and say, okay, it's fine. <laughs> I, I can't do that. I can't do that. You don't uh, see it. You don't see an end to it, do you? No, I don't see an end to it. I, I think if you're going to serve, you're going to serve until you die, no matter where you are. And if you don't have that type of mentality, then whatever political seat you have, you need to go home. You know, if you just if you're there for the next election, then you need to go home. Well, I respect that. You know, so whether I run or don't run, doesn't matter. I'm still going to be Charles Coleman. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's good. Well, I yeah. look forward to seeing you too. Yeah. Well, thank you, Dr. Coleman.